Hey everyone, it's me Tasha and today I want to talk to you about saving to fund your startup. So I have notes on my iPhone and so I will be looking down a little bit to do that. So I'm so excited for this conversation as you can see by my energy. Um, if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's get started. <laughs> so I have a couple bullet points on here. There's three bullet points. I'll probably talk a little bit more than those three bullet points. So one thing I hear a lot is I don't have the money to start my um, startup. Um, I'm tired of working where I, w I work. I need to quit. I need to move on and all these other things. The 31 year old Tasha, looking back, I was a little rushed in starting my first business. If I could do it, if I could do it now, I would do it totally differently to be completely honest. Um, I would I would have a lot more money saved. I had four hundred dollars saved. I would have a lot more money more money to save to start the business and to live off of. Um, as I've told people numerous times, I was very lucky that my dad paid for my living expenses while I started my business. And I know as an African American that does not happen very often. As a startup, that doesn't happen very often. So I'm very very fortunate. Um, the first couple years of my business, I was able to do that. But, you know, looking back, I still was doing foolish things that I shouldn't be doing. So I want to go over the foolish things that we tend to do that we don't need to do if we want to fund our startup. So one of the first things on here is um, you need to have no buy months. Like if you have if you don't have the funds, because I believe in general, everyone should have a thousand dollars in emergency savings like that's in general. If you do not have a thousand dollars before you even start a business, I need you to have that emergency fund. Things happen. It's happened to clients where the exact amount was like nine hundred and ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents. Like it's even happened to me. Like my car broke down when I came back from Miami, a vacation I was on and my expenses were like sixteen hundred pulled it out my savings account, paid for it, no worries. We tend to have worries because we don't save. So that's like the major point of this video, you need to save. So I need you to have no buy months. Um, we have so many affordable luxuries and I'm gonna link an article that you can read about affordable luxuries, but we have so, so, so many affordable luxuries in our lives that we tend to think they're the new normal. They're normal, I can go to Starbucks, I can get my hair done, um, I can get my nails done, I can go shopping. Um, I can go to yoga. Those are all affordable luxuries. I'll be completely honest. They're affordable luxuries that you can afford at this time point. But if you want to start a business, they need to, they need to be gone. Like when I first started my business, um, I was going to the hair salon maybe every other week. Sometimes I would go three times a month. And that's $45 just to get my hair done, not including tip. So <laughs> I was spending money that I could be using on my business. So I decided to literally uh, drastically cut that down and I started going to the hair school because I still wanted to get my hair done because I was transitioning to natural and I think it was like 10 to 15 dollars uh, every time so it was it, it cut it down drastically I stopped getting my nails done um, I was still going to Starbucks but not as frequently like if you're spending $25 a week at Starbucks minimum $25 a week times that by four times that by five Starbucks just got all your startup money. <laughs> That's what I want you to think. I need you to commit to no buy months. Go three to six months. I know that's kind of extreme. Go three to six months, no buying of things you don't need. All you need to do is buy your groceries, put gas in your car, pay your household bills, you know, cell phone, uh, utilities, cable, internet, water, rental insurance, mortgage or rent. Pay those things, your car insurance, your regular insurance, pay those things. Anything extra like going to the movies, going to happy hour, that all cease to exist. Like it completely, it's gone. Um, you need to learn how to live like basically rice and beans life. Like don't be going extra. I mean I even do the rice and beans sometimes like uh, I need to cut back this month. Like this is my expenses and I went over the shopping budget. So we're going to eat rice and beans and sausage for a whole week. Like we're going to have salad, um, nothing else, nothing fancy, no avocados. I mean like romaine, tomatoes, cucumbers. That's what we're going to go with. Um, I need y'all to be about this life of no spending money, like cutting it all out. Because if you went through your, your, uh, your, uh, what is those stupid things called? Your monthly statements from your bank or whatever, you would see how much money you spent. Like there was one month, like, and I even realized this, I was spending too much money a couple months ago going out to eat. And it wasn't going out to eat to restaurants, it was fast food. I would go to Chick-fil-A, I would be at Smoothie King. I mean, there was one time I was at Smoothie King five days in a row. I have a blender. <laughs> I have everything they have at Smoothie King. 
my stuff happens to be organic you know but I'm still going to Smoothie King money like I mean and my drink is like $5.19 so I'm spending like $25 you know that's a lot for one week on something that's like it's not even the meal replacement because I get the 20 ounce so we have to think about that like go through your bank statement and see how much money you're spending on things that you don't need to be spending like Target is like a black hole for me. I will go in there and buy stuff because it's 80% off knowing I don't need it. But you know what? Oh my God, I have to have this face because it's 80% off and it's only $5. No, you don't, Tasha. Stay out of your black holes. If your black hole happens to be Target or Walmart, don't go in there. If it happens to be online shopping, don't do it. I mean, I have a couple favorite online shops that I love, love, love. Like I go on that every day, even though I'm not buying anything. But then like they'll have something I really want and I'm like, only three hundred dollars um you know what you do for three hundred dollars Sasha that's what kicks in my head you know what I can do so that's what you have to remember and so I want you to like completely like go through it see where you're wasting money that could be going to your business because that's what you're doing you're complaining that you don't have money but you're wasting in another area that where it could be allocated next if you want to quit your job like I hate for people to be in toxic spaces. I really do. It's I don't like it because it just drains you in your energy. You need three to six months of living expenses saved. If you're married, you need six months, six months to a year, because that's two people. Um, if you got kids, you need six months, twelve months. I'm just honest. Like you just can't just do that. If you're single like me, three months it's pretty good. Three months because in those three months you can hustle. Because you know what? When you quit your job. And you realize ain't no steady check coming in a hustle comes in you you'd be like mm, I need to be everywhere I need to be passing out cards I need to do da 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 I mean you should have that hustle regardless but when you don't have a steady paycheck behind you it's a whole never whole nother level of a push so you need three to six months of savings the minimum you can go further if you want and when I say that I mean I need you to calculate all your bills up all the bills that you normally pay your car note your house note um, your, or your rent for your apartment your cable bill your phone bill your internet bill your utilities bill I need you to calculate all those bills up then I need you to add things like you know your groceries um, medical expenses you saving um, tithing and stuff like that um, like it's a normal month and it's the first of the month and you're paying bills what is that number once you have that number, I need you to add 15% to it. Sometimes I tell people the extreme of 30%. But the reason I say that is because that's going to be what's paying your bills. And that's your nest egg until you get those paying clients and customers. There's like, there's always a way to get things done, but you need to break everything down. What is each line item? Then at the total, you need to add that 15 or 30% to it. And that's what you need to have in your nest egg and your savings. That way you can quit your job next so you want to quit your job you want to start your business you've already done the no buy month it's got you a little bit of coinage you've gotten somewhat to your three to six months of um living expenses now the one thing you're going to hate me about but i'm going to be really honest about this you need to get a part-time job i know i hear you now tasha i'm trying to work on my startup i'm trying to build that it up don't nobody know you ain't nobody shopping you ain't nothing you need to put a pause pause time out uh uh you need to go drive a car for uber that's what you need to go do like i have friends that drive cars for uber and one friend um in eight days eight days like she made 982 dollars driving that's after tax i mean that's after gas and all that other stuff so that's eight days and i mean she did that for six months and i think she saved around like Cause she was still paying her like regular expenses like she had already quit her job when she did this let me point that out um she had saved around like five six thousand dollars so she was paying her regular expenses she saved five six thousand dollars and she put aside some money for living expenses she ended up quitting uber too now she does her job her business full-time you need to get a part-time job you need to be in a call center um you need to be like hilton's reservations or something like that that you work from home but you need a part-time job you need money coming in there's apps like task rabbit where you can run errands for people if you're off on saturday sunday this is the prime day to go run errands for people i hate being out saturday and sunday like i hate being around all those people i'm just gonna be completely honest like i love people but it's like for some reason in my head i wait until saturday and sunday to run errands when i work for myself and i can run errands at any time 
but I need you to start hustling like it's never been before of how to get this money. There's always ways, like even I'll put it this way, and I talked about it in my last video when I wanted to switch bank accounts. Chase happened to send me a $300 credit to open my account or whatever. Um, yes, I did have to put $1,000 in there, but I have $1,000 because that goes to saving um, to get the $300 credit. If you got it, like Google it. If you want to switch it, like you don't have a business checking account at all, you need one. Google bonuses. Like if you want to go to Bank of America, see if Bank of America has a bonus for you opening an account. Take that paper with you. If you want to go to Chase or if you want to go, mm, I really don't like Wells Fargo, but you know, something like that. If you want to go there, Google, they have a bonus to open an account. Even like um, there's a bank called Navy Federal that's mainly in Army Towns and they were doing a referral for every up to $250 that you get for referring five people. I hustled and find five people to go open some savings accounts. And then I told them, I said, y'all have direct deposit, just direct deposit 10% of your check. You won't even know what's missing. Bam. I got $250 for them opening their account. There's money out there, but you need to hustle and work for it. That's what you need to remember. So if you want to, you know, fund your startup and you want to get out there, great. I want you to get out there too. But I want you to remove the limits of how money's going to come in. I want you to remove how you do things and everything else. I mean, I even decided to let things go and put them on eBay. Like, I was like, I'm not even wearing this. Like, I have attachment issues. I'm going to be really honest. I have attachment issues to everything I buy. Um, I believe that I need to keep it. But I was like, I'm not even wearing this. And it was so funny to put things on eBay and they sell. So I'm not going to try to act all flawless, but the video had break and I had to reset it and all that great bad new stuff. Um, but I have like serious attachment issues when it comes to things and I hoard them and all this other stuff. So they're on eBay and it's great when, you know, the cha-ching and you win, I mean, you sell something, get rid of what you don't need, put the money into your three to six months, um, savings account. That way you can flourish and start your business. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, um, like, just leave them in the comments below and I'll respond back to them. If you like this video, please share it with the world because I want to grow my YouTube channel. So I thank you. I will talk to you later. Bye.